the face of it, this is a hard sell to the video game crowd. There's no direct control over an avatar. You complete quick time events, make choices, and that's about it really. Yet the limitations of the format are mostly transformed into strengths here. You may initially mourn the loss of the ability to spin on the spot and jump around on tables during poignant dialogue, but once you're playing it, you'll want a little more than to see what happens next. The story concerns two very different families brought crashing together during a small town motel siege. The walkers are moving house with little more than prosaic family tensions to worry about. The Hulks are after a large amount of cash for reasons that are soon made clear. To explain much more than that would run the risk of spoilers, which in a game like this could tear holes through the experience. Learn how to drive, asshole! Are you kidding me?! As a motion comic, there's almost no full animation present. Instead, what are essentially comic panels are presented one after the other with subtle fade-in transitions. We worried that this would break the atmosphere for us, but we got used to it almost straight away. A razor-sharp script and striking art based on photography of real-life people acting out the scenes certainly helps. The acting too is terrific. Separate actors are used for the art and the voiceovers. For example, Vince Walker is the actor, Oliver Britton visually, but he has the voice of Elias Tufexis, perhaps best known to the gamers as Deus Ex's Adam Jensen. Tufexis does a stellar job, but the distinctive voice does mean that the dad sounds a bit like Batman. Hey, you are rocking this today, Zoe. Looks like you're ready for the next level. Despite the limited nature of gameplay, As Dusk Falls features multiplayer, which actually seems to be the developer's preferred method of play. We, however, strongly believe that it's best enjoyed as a solo experience. It can be played online by invite or locally via an app. The idea is that the player choices are voted on, drama by democracy. If that appeals to you, then brilliant. But it's hard to deny that playing this way drains the experience of intimacy and whisks away any control over pace from an individual. You haven't told me whose house this is. It doesn't matter who. The two words that constantly pumped through the heart of the game during our playthrough were intimacy and pace. Quality writing combined with quality acting meant that we quickly began to care about all these people and what happened to them. And more than once, we found ourselves agonizing over a decision. We felt close to the people, close to the story, and close to making a decision that we would regret. Similarly, with no possibility of the player becoming lost or distracted in the game world, the developers have enormous control over the pace of the story, and they nail it. You know what? We even didn't mind the QTEs. Hell, we like them. It amuses us greatly that the game features not one, but two dishwashing QTEs. But other than that, their inclusion makes sense, and often even adds to a scene's tension. Trying to escape a pursuer over rough terrain, hurried hot wiring a car, getting a stubborn bit of food off a plate. You know, that sort of thing. It probably sounds like we love as dusk falls, and that's because we do. However, when you love somebody, you have a duty to point out any important mistakes that they make. This is why we have to say that the ending is shit. We're so frustrated with it, it made us swear in a review. We're talking specifically about the final scene. The scene that everybody gets regardless of any choices they made beforehand. The scene that plays out no matter who's dead, arrested, divorced, or forgot to do the dishes. It's cheap, it's lazy, and we hate it. Sticking that scene on the end of As Dusk Falls is like super gluing a Funko Pop to the end of a Rolls Royce. Nevertheless, we still like the way that our first attempt of the story turned out, especially if we pretend that the final scene never happened. Events and relationships ended in a messy, realistic way that we wish we could share with you. And as the credits rolled, we was already thinking about what we'd do differently next time. The ending we'd like to see and how we might get there. There are a few bumps in the road on the way to that final sequence, but they were more potholes providing brief shakes than landmines, and that sent the wheels flying off. For example, the main disadvantage of the visual representation, and one that could not be sidestepped entirely, is that static faces simply cannot express emotion as effectively as faces in motion. Most of the time, this wasn't an issue, but on occasions, usually when a character was caught mid-grimace in anger, expressions were unintentionally amusing. There were also precisely two decisions that we could have done with a bit of work, which of course we can't go into detail about. Still, considering the fact that you're provided with a near constant stream of decisions to make, including a higher number of significant ones than you might expect, the fact that there were just two that struck us as imperfect is pretty impressive. 
It also has to be said that the handful of flashback sequences, while as excellently put together as the rest of the game, are robbed of a degree of tension simply because you already know that one or more characters doesn't die. We're pretty much scraping the bottom of the criticism barrel here though, because we're running out of things we don't like. If you're looking for a strong story that you'll want to replay at least once, and something to tie you over until we get that AAA dishwashing simulator we're all waiting for, this is very much your game.